All right, I took a cursory look at the uh, block diagram of the uh, Tiny SA Ultra to see what's going on. Let's let's first talk about a, a generic uh, spectrum analyzer. Some people have asked me questions about what's the difference between a uh, software-defined radio and a uh, spectrum analyzer, and most of it comes down to filtering. Um, so here is a is a typical uh, block diagram for a spectrum analyzer. The input goes. Uh, in a connector on the front panel. Some spectrum analyzers will have a DC block capacitor in the uh, analyzer itself. Um, sometimes you have to add that externally, but um, in the uh, in the uh, tiny SA, it has a DC block inside. Then you usually go through an attenuator so you can set levels. Um, then you go through a low-pass filter. So if the spectrum analyzer goes from 0 to 800 megahertz, your low pass filter goes between zero and 800 megahertz, and then any frequencies above that will will get killed, and they won't come out won't come out the front. Um, so that and it also adds selectivity to what comes in. You, you won't run any higher um, values into the uh, into the mixer. So the low pass filter works bidirectionally. Then there's a mixer that's shown here as a circle with an X. Um, the incoming signal gets mixed with an LO, and um, that's a local oscillator. And some frequency will be picked, um, and then that will be run through a bandpass filter. So the resolution bandwidth of a spectrum analyzer is set by this bandpass filter. Um, it can either be a physical bandpass filter or a bandpass filter executed in an FPGA uh, or some type of software. Um, it can, so it can either be hardware or it can be software-based. And then you detect it usually with an AM detector or something, and a display it on a display. So this is a typical block diagram. Okay, I talked about uh, the difference between software-defined radios and spectrum analyzers coming all down to those two filters, and this is how the filter is implemented in the Tiny SA Ultra. Uh, this is the low-pass filter. Um, it is uh, groups of uh, six different uh, LC networks. Um, and so very, very standard uh, design, and um, this will have very good roll-off characteristics, very good attenuation. So that filter lives in this section of the PC board, and uh, you can see this is the path through that filter. So the Tiny SA Ultra allows you to go through the um, low-pass filter or bypass it. I think you kind of see what the uh, bypass path would be there. Now the bandpass filter is uh, made with surface acoustic wave bandpass filters. So those are little chips packaged up and you buy those. And they're very, very narrow. They're very, very nice uh, filters. And to make them even nicer, you put two in series. So that's what's done here. There's some LC matching network on the outside of these saw filters. So there's capacitor inductor, and then inductor, capacitor inductor. So um, that also helps a bit with the filtering as well. And uh, that section of the bandpass filter is here also in the uh, area where the filters and the uh, mixer, the mixer is that big blocky white thing up in the upper left-hand corner, and the uh, bandpass filter there is in the upper right, and you can see the path here that uh, that the uh, bandpass filter has. All right, so now that we understand what a spectrum analyzer is and that you need two filters, this is what the Tiny SA Ultra, I think, looks like. Um, it is a bit unusual in that the connector is used both as input and output. Um, so the um, connector comes in. The first thing it sees is a diode. That diode is there for protection. Uh, the limits on the Tiny SA Ultra are plus 6 dBm and 25 volts DC. So that's what it's rated. Anything over plus, five, uh, plus 6 dBm or anything over 5 volts DC um, is unhealthy for the uh, for the instrument. It then goes into a switch, and that switch basically switches between it being used for output or it being used for input. So if it's being used for output, the switch will be in the upper position, and um, 
the RF generation section of the tiny SA will have to come through another switch and then a capacitor and then it will go to the outside world. So that's how the out that's how the uh, RF output is is uh, is wired. If you're going to use it for input, you would select it over to the other section. Um, it would go through a capacitor once again and then go through an attenuator and out. Now there's also another path which allows you to, if both of those two switches are set to the up position, you can bypass the attenuator. All right, so the output of this section then comes down and then starts going right to left. And you can either go through that low pass filter or not go through that low pass filter. So there's switching to allows you to do that. And then the rest of it is pretty standard. You go into a mixer and the mixer uh, gets mixed with an LO. Uh, and then comes out to the bandpass filter, a receiver IC, uh, microcontroller, and display. Now that receiver uh, chip, I don't know which one they're using in the Tiny SA Ultra. It's a different one from the Tiny SA. It has uh, different uh, filter characteristics and stuff. So um, some of the filtering is done with the uh, saw filters, but most of the filtering is done uh, in, in software in the, uh, in the receiver IC. So when they go down to uh, 200 hertz resolution bandwidth, that's that's done in the receiver IC. Uh, the microcontroller is the STM32, and the display is that four-inch LCD on the front. Okay, um, I'm not quite sure of some of the other paths uh, that looks like are here. I don't know if they're calibration paths, um, and I'm not still sure how the ultra mode works. So if somebody has some ideas of how they think the, the ultra mode works, when the ultra mode is, is enabled, the low pass filter is bypassed. Um, so I, I don't know what that does to the circuit. All right. Uh, so that's a quick look at the tiny SA ultra, um, block diagram and, uh, Hope that uh, is of interest.